has been the case for several decades. Tell us why you're making this change to change the way you brief Congress on security matters. Sure. Well, Maria, when I went through a confirmation, people watched that. They heard me make a couple of promises. One of them was to always follow the law. The other was that I would do everything I could to protect uh, the unauthorized disclosure of classified information, allowing people to leak it for political purposes. The action that I announced yesterday is entirely consistent with that. I reiterated to Congress, look, I'm going to keep you fully and currently informed uh, as required by the law, but I also said we're not going to do a repeat of what happened a month ago when I did more than that, what, what was required at the request of Congress to brief not just the oversight committees, but every member of Congress. When I did that, Maria, I said, my only condition is that you treat this information with the respect that it deserves and you keep it private. And yet within minutes of that, one of those briefings ending, uh, a number of members of Congress went to a number of different publications and leaked classified information, again, for uh, political purposes, to create a narrative that simply isn't true, that somehow um, Russia is a greater national security threat uh, than China. So uh, I'm going to continue to keep the promises that I made. I'm going to continue to follow the law. I'm going to continue to keep Congress informed. But we've had a pandemic of, of uh, information being leaked out of the uh, intelligence community. And I'm going to take the measures to make sure that that stops. And, and, and in fact, Senator Ron Johnson has been with us several times on this program, and he told us during the transition period from the Obama administration to the Trump administration, there were 125 leaks in 126 days. So there was a leak a day. Talk to us why this is so important for the public to understand, because we know that you've been on this program a lot during the investigation into Russia. And Adam Schiff was out there saying that there was collusion in plain sight. Uh, you know, it, it, it fits his narrative to continue pushing this Russia narrative. But did they miss the true adversary, which is China? Right. Well, again, Maria, as you said at the top of the show, um, in this position, I'm privileged to see more intelligence than anyone else in the country other than the president. That includes all members of Congress. And uh, and I as I see intelligence every single day, when you consider the fact that uh, uh, the, the amount of intelligence that we get and we consider economically, militarily, technologically, China is the greatest threat that we face. Um, I don't mean to minimize Russia. They are a serious national security threat. But day in, day out, the threats that we face from China are significantly greater. And I think that's clear. And anyone that sees intelligence knows that. And anyone who says otherwise is just politicizing intelligence um, for their own narrative. I mean, you look at the potential threat from Russia versus China, director, and we know that Russia doesn't have the wherewithal that China has. China is the second largest economy. They've made their plans very clear. They want to unseat America as the number right. one superpower, correct? So, uh, uh, absolutely. And, and please don't misunderstand this. Uh, Russia is a serious national security threat in so many different respects. All right, we're going to take a short break here. Uh, Director of National Intelligence John Ratcliffe is with us this morning. We will slip in a short break.